IronCAD now employs a bi-directional constraint solver for uh, constraining parts together and uh, we'll demonstrate uh, some of that here. We'll create a, a, a lock smart dimension between these parts and you'll see uh, when you first uh, edit the dimension it will move the first part that was uh, you know clicked on when you created the dimension. You can now uh, right click on the dimension and choose switch preferable moving shape and then when you edit that dimension now you can see the arrow goes in the other what the blue arrow goes in the other direction and it updates the other part so the blue arrow di uh, dictates which uh, part is going to move further to that as we add uh, positioning constraints uh, between parts uh, it will uh, bidirectionally solve uh, in real time as you're placing the constraints and this is something that's new to IronCAD so uh, as we and you'll notice also automatically a pop-up menu comes up there the S key menu and gives you options for different constraints it'll automatically grab a concentric uh, constraint if you uh, select two cylinders as we did there before and uh, you can quickly uh, and easily change to mate uh, uh, type with the uh, pull down menu there and hit OK on the, the little pop up floaty menu and again just pop in a constraint there for concentric and you see here it's going to constrain this and, and move the parts automatically and that's something new to IronCAD with the bidirectional uh, solving so this is something that wasn't able to do before but now uh, you can notice also we're going to move this assembly in real time with the tri-ball not even in mechanism mode and it's updating all those constraints putting in a you know the, all the uh, the motion uh, between the linkages there okay and we're going to go ahead and show now also how you can resolve um, a constraint issue where uh, you know that may be unsolvable um, you know due to conflicting constraints so we'll hide those parts there and we're going to put um, a constraint here between this end face and made it to the assembly down here at the other end and you'll notice it uh, will come up and complain that uh, it's unable to so solve that successfully because of the other constraints at the assembly level so we'll just hit uh, cancel there to let it create anyway now we can uh, right click on that failed constraint and then hit the uh, little down arrow button and choose a different uh, part, the actual part underneath the assembly and let that part move now and you can see that updated to uh, mate that part to the assembly we'll uh, turn everything else back on and now you can see if you um, move the, the first assembly it will uh, update the entire model as, uh, as required So this bidirectional uh, constraint solving really uh, provides a, a much deeper set of functionality than before, and uh, you know you can also see these constraints and uh, show their relationships there, you know, in the uh, scene browser uh, to see how they're uh, connected. You can see the green and red highlighting showing that those are two are uh, constrained together in uh, in that fashion.